everyone, how are we all? Welcome back to my channel and to another food weekly shop with some recipe meal ideas. I really, really enjoyed filming this one last week and there's been some lovely comments saying that you enjoyed them and you're glad that they're back. So, it's that time of week, it's a Monday, it's a fresh start. We're gonna go food shopping together. I'm gonna show you what I buy this week and what we're gonna make. I've already wrote the list. So many of you say, um, you know, where do you get your meal plans from? This is such a good hack. Like, I mean, it's not really a hack. I, I just find it so easy because we've got to coordinate calendars so we know when we're in, when we're not. So, this week, today is a Monday. We're having it. It's a very hot day. I'm currently in shorts. Um, it's like 26 degrees, which for us is hot in London. So we're going to do a roasted carrot and potato salad with kale. It was actually a HelloFresh recipe and we love it that much. We're going to recreate it. Tuesday, we're actually out for dinner. Wednesday, we're going to make a spicy Korean ramen from a new cookbook that I've just been sent. Thursday, we're actually out again. And Friday, we're out again. Sorry, so yeah, we're out quite a few evenings, which we will have food. Saturday, we're going to do a curried flatbread pizza. And Sunday, we're going to do a kosher and mint pasta with feta. So, really nice, light, summery meals. The cookbooks we're using this week, we've got this one, which is new. It's been sent over to me by... Makiko Sano, and it is a ramen cookbook, so we're going to do a spicy ramen out of that. We're using the vintage one, this is Gino's pasta. This is actually from my mum. she's had this for years, and she used to cook a lot of our pastas at home from this. So that's what's inspired the pasta this week. And then we've got Feasts of Veg, this is such a beautiful cookbook. This is by Nina Ollison, and um, Kate actually got me this for Christmas. So we're going to do the flatbreads out of that. We're making a thing each week to cook a new dish from a new cookbook, just because I have so many. And naturally when I'm making recipes, I don't tend to reference other ones, so that's what we're doing. So I'm going to grab some bags and head to the supermarket. This is Future Luke just editing this video and I wanted to do a quick price comparison just to kind of explain um, why I prefer to shop at Waitrose and sometimes a lot of people have a misconception that Waitrose is more expensive than other supermarkets. So take a can of chickpeas in um, Aldi, they are 59p. Same price as Tesco because Aldi and Tesco like price match in comparison to try and compete. Whereas in Waitrose, they're 55p. So it's only four pence cheaper, but naturally you'd associate Waitrose being more expensive, but they've lowered the price of a lot of their groceries. Yes, they are slightly more expensive in other elements such as fresh fruit and vegetables. But as I said in the video, I feel like the fresh fruit and vegetables lasts longer, tastes better, and I'm happy to spend a little bit more rather than having to throw the food away, because in me that is a complete waste of money. I'd rather spend a little bit more and have the best produce that we can get. So yeah, sorry, just to clear that up. So I've got my list, I didn't have time to pop it on my phone. We were on a bit of a time schedule today, so uh, spinach already reduced, that's what we like to see. It's going straight in the freezer, so that is good. A little saving on that. And the kale has been reduced as well. This is what I was saying about Waitrose prices. People think it's really expensive, but it actually in comparison, it's the same, you know, and you get really good quality stuff as well, so big bag of kale for tonight's dinner. So I've got one kosher again with comparison to the markets, being able to buy individually, I love because we just need the one. So we're going to do da, 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 green vegetables, courgette, and that's it. We grab some vine tomatoes. I got some of these last week and we ate them all, they were delish. I deviated from the list slightly. I just saw these mini watermelons. I find watermelons sometimes really tricky because they're so large, but I'm fancying a watermelon salad because we've got some mint in the fridge. So I'm just looking to see if they have any feta, which would be gorgeous with the salad. The list is coming along though, we're nearly there. I've had this feta before, it's really, really good. It's proper Greek authentic feta, so that's going in the trolley. Just saw the oat and vanilla drink here. This is new, I've never tried it before, but I thought this would be good for protein shakes, so I'm gonna give that a go. It's on special, 125. So these are the tubs that I use sometimes in breakfasts, and I get a lot of questions about them. They are just spices, and they've just launched in Waitrose. just picked up some um, fresh salmon as well. I'm gonna have that with my dinner tonight with a kale salad. Um, and <laughs> Rosie may have slipped into the trolley ever so slightly. I'm gonna grab some crisps just because it is such nice weather recently. It's just nice to take some to the park and then I'm done. I'm getting these, what we got last week because we had them in the car and they were delicious. So they're going straight in. 
and that's me all checked out. And there we are, I'm all done, checked out, it was a breeze. I've just grabbed this recipe card, peach and mozzarella rocket salad. How good does that look? It's definitely worth having a look at some of the recipe cards when you leave, because there's some great options. I'm definitely gonna make that, I love peach salad. I'm grabbing a copy of the Waitrose Weekend too. Okay, so I've just unpacked this week's food shop. The total this week came to 49.78, and again, included rosé. <laughs> there is a reoccurring theme. I've also had to put the light on because it is currently thunder and lightning outside. It's like, what time is it? It's quarter past four in the afternoon. So yeah, it's usually nice and bright, but not today. Anyway, so eggs. I got some of the Burford Browns. These are my absolute favorite. Again, they are slightly more expensive, but I just think they taste delicious. Three baby potatoes for this evening's salad. Two avocados just to eat throughout the week. A lemon, because I'm going to make some hummus. Vine tomatoes. I just love tomatoes on the vine. I think they taste so much more. I guess if they've been grown in a greenhouse. Coriander, good herb. I'm going to teach you a little trick on how to keep that fresh if you find it wilts. An onion, a courgette. An essentials, garlic baguette. I showed you this in the supermarket. This is the autumn vanilla drink. Never tried it, but um, I'll let you know how it is. Some Oatly Oat Drink, again I use this in my protein smoothies. Greek Natural Yogurt. A little itty ditty watermelon. I'm gonna do a watermelon and feta salad. We have some shiitake mushrooms. This is for the ramen. The Odyssey Feta. Some strawberries. Whole um, peanut butter. That's just really nice for um, snacks. I have this on rice cakes. The rosé, I thought this looks really nice and bougie. It was a Pinot Nero. Veneto, um, yeah, I think it was $7.99 on special. Never tried it, but it looked nice. I'm a sucker for a nice bottle. <laughs> um, I got a fillet of salmon. I'm gonna cut this in half, have half tonight and half tomorrow. Um, it's five pounds, so it works about two pound fifty per portion. Which was also do fish Friday, where you get 20% off fish if you buy it on a Friday. A bag of carrots. I'd usually buy these loose, but they didn't have any loose ones. And we're gonna use a lot of these, and we've got leftover hummus, so I'm gonna use that to dip in. Clementine juice, just because Zara prefers this to orange juice. She has that in her smoothies. Milk for Zara's teas. West Country cheddar and caramelized onion crisps. These are so, so good. Uh, mixed salad, just for salads for Zara and I throughout the week for lunches. Garlic, because we eat so much garlic. Um, again, a pack of red chilies. Bananas, just for breakfasts. Again, they're loose. Bag of kale, this is for dinner tonight. We're gonna roast this. A bag of spinach, whatever we don't use in the recipes, I will freeze because this is kind of needs using up ASAP. And then last but not least, some Granny Smith apples. And obviously I got the recipe card for the peach and mozzarella rocket salad. And then I picked up a Witch Rose Weekend to have a little look through. Again, this is completely free. You can grab it in store and it's packed full of delicious recipes. That's my friend Ellie there. She does a column every week. This is Ellie Cushion. Very good food writer. So yeah, all done. I find if chilies come in packs, I tend to keep them out and just on the side. Um, removing them from the plastic really does help and I just keep them to get a little bit of sunlight. Basil's still doing really well too. These were leftover carrots of what we don't need this week, so I'm going to give them a quick trim and pop them in the freezer. And then coriander, if you get some kitchen paper, uh, or you can use a reusable cloth, dampen it and wrap it in the coriander. Actually keeps the coriander fresh. You can keep it in water, but I find that actually works the best. They used to do that in the restaurant I worked at and it kept it fresh every time. This is meal number one of the week and we're gonna make a roasted carrot potato and kale salad. This is not my recipe, this is a HelloFresh recipe that we had I think two weeks ago and it was that good, we're recreating it. Ingredients, we're gonna need a red onion, two carrots, but these are quite small, so I've got three, some flaked almonds, balsamic glaze. The recipe uses fig jam, but I don't really wanna buy a whole thing of fig jam for it to sit in the fridge, so we have just some regular blackcurrant and strawberry jam. It's just for a bit of sweetness and sugar. Some potatoes, olive oil, cumin, kale. And I'm actually gonna do some oven roasted salmon as well with like a nice crust. Um, I'm gonna half this fillet and then uh, pop the rest in the fridge. Okay, so we're starting with the salmon. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna give this a nice little crust. Where's the crust gone? 
So this is the Mediterranean uh, style crust. This is from Waitrose. I've used this before. Actually, it's really, really good. It's like lots of nice breadcrumbs with like um, herbs in. We've got salt, chili flakes, red pepper, bell peppers, thyme. Anyway, the salmon's quite a generous piece. I got this at the fishmonger counter, but it's quite large, so I'm going to cut it in the middle. Look at the colour of that, isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to go straight down the middle. I'm going to add that into a piece of tin foil. And then sprinkle over some breadcrumbs just on the top. Yeah, a bit of olive oil, lovely. And then that's going to go in the oven first, whilst we cut the veggies. I'm just going to seal it off like that. Right, we're going to cut the potatoes up. These are baby potatoes. Any potatoes you have, really, uh, just cut them up in slices like this. It's going to give them a bit of a rinse just because they're being out and loose. It's just going to get all the muck off them. Okay, after they've been washed, you can dry them with a towel, but it's not necessary. Just make sure they're nice and even on a roasting tray. Drizzle on olive oil. Salt. a nice sort of toss with your hands, make sure they're nice and quartered. Perfect, and that's going to go into the oven as well. Salmon on top, spuddies in the middle. Okay, so the carrots is going to top and tail them. Yeah. The recipe says no need to peel. I often believe that as well because I think a lot of the nutrients are in the skins. So we cut them into five centimeter batons, so flat surface, half, and then half again. A rinse. And then the red onion we're just topping and tailing. Straight down the middle. And we're cutting this into wedges. Slice the up and see little petals. Okay, so we're tossing these onto a roasting tray. Like that. I'm gonna do olive oil. Pepper. Cumin. There's a teaspoon of cumin, but I really like the taste of carrots and cumin, so we're going to do a little bit more. And a bit of salt as well. I would get my hands involved in this, but they will smell of cumin for a week. So that's going in the oven too. Bottom shelf this time. Yeah. If you have an air fryer with a dual zone, you could definitely do that in the air fryer. And that all needs to roast for about 25 minutes. There we are. Okay, so in the pan we're adding a drizzle of olive oil. It doesn't have to be fancy olive oil, just a nice... Amount. This is the dressing for the salad, and then we're going to grate in the garlic clove. It says one, but we always do more <laughs> because we love garlic. And then we just need to fry this until it's softened, not burned, and then we'll come back to you. Now we're adding a balsamic glaze. If you don't have the glaze, you can just add balsamic vinegar and just reduce it down. And then we are improvising here with blackcurrant jam instead of fig. We've had a blackcurrant bake before though. Yeah, and it's really nice. I think it's just anything sweet. Now, this morning I had tomatoes and strawberries and it was delicious with balsamic. It was really, really good. Mm. There we are. You need 80 grams of fig jam. So if you do have it, or if you need it, even better, stir that together. And then we're going to add a splash of water to like, um, loosen it, sorry. And that's it. That's your dressing done. Right, I'm just going to give the carrots and onions a little bit of a turn. Oh, they've got some lovely colour on them. And then done. So we're going to pop the kale on top just to give it a bit of a roast. Mmm. It says 100 grams of kale, but I feel like we can be a little bit more generous. And then we're taking the spuddies out. And then with these, you just use the back of something flat just to give them a bit of a press. Just to flatten them down a little bit. And then I'll check of my salmon. So I'm going to release the top part just to get it nice and crispy. That is looking good. Right, back into the oven for five and then dinner is ready. Right, so we're adding everything into a bowl. You can just add it straight into a plate, but I feel like it's just nice to toss a salad so everything gets nice and evenly coated. We also made some bread while we were and went for this to roast, which is a good way to save on them. Save on the money, we have all the ingredients, so I thought, why not? So we've got three hours left on the bread maker, because that is multitasking at its point. There we are, that's going in there. Oh, oh. that's Saved by the bell. Adding in the spuddies. It seems weird having potatoes in a salad, but it just works. It's my favorite salad. Mm. The original recipe has gourds cheese, but I am the only person who eats gourds cheese because I was not keen, so I thought it'd be a bit of a waste. So I'm having salmon instead. And then this is the dressing. This is the garlic 
dressing, so we're just going to pour that. I'm going to do that much because I feel. Stir all of that together. I'm just going to serve that up on the plate. It's going to sprinkle some almonds on top for a bit of crunch. Delicious. And then I'm going to do my salmon just on top. There we go. It kind of fell apart, but that's okay. Let me flip that. Salmon and roasted kale salad. This looks absolutely delicious. This would be vegan without the salmon bob, so you could just leave the salmon out. Or you can add chicken, prawns, whatever you fancy. Mm. It's gone for a taste. Mm. Even though it's a hot salad, it's still perfect for this weather. Very nice. I'll link the recipe down below. I'll take you to the HelloFresh website, but it's really easy to follow. Mm. So it is Wednesday today, and I actually was going to cook a ramen. I think I said I was going to film that. However, it's 30 degrees today, and I thought, you know what, that's probably the last thing we need. So we're going to do Sunday's dinner tonight. I'm going to take it to the park and have like a nice alfresco dinner. So I'm going to be making the courgette pasta from Gino to Campo's cookbook. So this is everything you're going to need. So this is the cookbook, and this is its fusilli con zucchini alla scapecce. We aren't using fusilli, but this is everything. So got some courgettes that we had in the freezer that have just been thawing out. These were a mixed courgette. Um, the recipe says two, so I bought another one. We're using conchilia. Um, you can use any pasta you like. I imagine it's just like a nice cold pasta. Good quality olive oil, balsamic vinegar. I have some feta in here that I use for lunch. And then we've got three garlic cloves, some fresh mint, and the recipe doesn't actually ask for onion. However, I had some chopped onion left from a salad last night, so I thought that could be nice just stir it through. Okay, so in the pan over here, I'm gonna add some recently boiled kettle water. Just pop that straight in. I'm using the blanching basket just because it's gonna be easier to remove the pasta. And I have a bowl here that we're gonna pop it in once it's cool. So I'm gonna tip the conchilia into the pan, season it with some salt, and then cook that until it's nice and al dente. I like using the blanching basket. It's not traditionally used for pasta, but um, it's just really handy to check on the progress. And you can give it a little wiggle just so it doesn't stick together. Right, frying pan. We're gonna need some olive oil in here, and we're gonna start frying the courgettes. Okay, so we're just gonna top until the courgette, and then slice it down the middle, and then chop this up into roughly, into like one centimeter thick slices. There might actually be a lot of this left over, so we'll see how we get on. So because these courgettes are frozen, I'm gonna add them into the oil first. They've actually thawed out quite well because it's really warm today. I'm gonna give them a quick soften with some salt, and then we'll add the fresh courgette in there after that. It's gonna peel the garlic cloves now, using the back of the knife, just give them a light press. This helps remove the skin like that. You're gonna add as much garlic as you like. Gino says add two, but we love garlic, so we're gonna do a little bit more. I'm just gonna finally slice that up. I added a little splash guard because they were spitting slightly, so I'm gonna add in the fresh courgettes now, and that should help them settle down. I'm just picking some leaves off of the stalks for some mint. You need about 15 mint leaves in total. If you're not really keen on mint, you could use dill or parsley. I think that would be nice. And I'm just going to roughly chop this up with my knife. So now the courgettes have had about two or three minutes to cook. I'm going to add in the chopped garlic and then just toss all that together. Give a little season with pepper as well. Okay, so I'm going to drain off the pasta and remove the pasta water. Give that a nice little toss. Sorry, it's so steamy. And then run cold water through it just to stop the pasta from cooking. Give that a nice little shake. You can do this in a colander if you don't have a blanching basket, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so the courgettes have got some lovely colour. I'm going to add a splash of balsamic vinegar. It says three tablespoons, so I'm going to do about that. And just let that reduce down to get rid of some of the acidity. Okay, so we're going to add the cooled pasta into a bowl to fully cool down. To stop the pasta sticking together, I'm just going to drizzle some really good quality olive oil in. And because we're going to be assembling it in this bowl, I'm going to grab some salad servers and just give that a nice little toss. And we can regularly give this a stir as well, just to make sure it doesn't stick together. So into the cooled pasta, I'm going to add the chopped red onion. You can leave that out if you aren't um, keen on like raw onion, but I love the flavour. And then the chopped mint is going in too. Let's give that a little toss. And now I'm going to add in the cooked courgettes. They've cooled slightly in the pan, they're still quite hot, but they will cool with the pasta. So we're going to toss all of that together. This is looking so good, it smells amazing too. So I'm going to make sure that's thoroughly mixed. So I've got a Tupperware, what we're going to take to the park, but I'm going to plate some up for you guys so you can see this as like a finished result, so you don't have to see it in a glass Tupperware. Sorry about the crowd outside, I'm just going to crumble over some feta on top. And then just tear up some mint leaves for garnish. 
So there we are, this is the pasta salad portioned up and we have so much to take to the park for leftovers. Let's go in for a taste. Okay, let's give this a try. It smells so good. I love courgettes, especially at this time of year. That is so good. Do you know, I was a bit concerned about the balsamica, whether it makes the courgettes a little bit too sweet, but the acidity really works, especially with the feta. It's lovely and creamy. I make the perfect meal where you can prep in advance. Gino says in the cookbook you can keep it in the fridge for two days, just eat it cool. I'm here for it. I think this might be my new favorite pasta salad. Delicious. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I really hope you guys have enjoyed another little recipe video and also come shop with me as well. I will link all of the recipes like in a written format and links down below to the cookbooks we've used this week as well. And I'll link last week's video if you missed it. I will make these more of a regular thing because I know you guys enjoy them. So thank you so much for watching. Love to you all. Take care and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.